Good evening and welcome to Zoom In on a Fresh Conversation. It is Monday night all over again. I am your host, Donna Gray Banks, and our special guests this evening are registered Fresh Book Festival authors, Pamela James Coleman and Stephanie Harrington. Welcome to Zoom In on a Fresh Conversation, ladies. Thank you. We can't hear you, Stephanie. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to us. Thank, Thank you for having you. us. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Zoom in on a fresh conversation is brought to you by Eyeless Diamonds LLC. Lee's Press, a Dante production, welcomes you to Valentine's Celebration at Cinematique on Beach Street. It will be on the 18th, I believe, of February. Let me see. The 11th of February at 2 p.m. You'll be home before the Super Bowl. So if you want to get into a date with your little lady or your wife or your significant other, bring him or her to the Valentine's Day afternoon and you'll be home in time for the Super Bowl. <laughs> and it's the Fresh Book Festival. It is the 22, 23, 24 of February, 2024 in the beautiful city of Daytona Beach. We hope that you will join us there. It is going to be a weekend of a lot of stuff going on that weekend. There's a jazz festival going on. There's a city workshop going on. There's Zanzibar Blue that weekend. So if you have any downtime while you're at the festival, there's so many other things to do. So come join us in the beautiful city of Daytona Beach for the Fresh Book Festival. If you have any questions for the ladies, please leave them it, leave them in the chat room. And this conversation is being recorded. Thank you, ladies. And I want to take a moment for you guys to tell us a little bit about yourself. And I'll go with you, Stephanie, first. Okay. Thank you, Miss Donna, for having me here. Um, hello. Good evening. My name is uh, Stephanie Harrington. And I'm inspired by the belief that every woman deserves the opportunity to live a healthier, happier, and wealthier life. This conviction is not just a personal calling, but also a response to the pressing need for platforms that foster holistic development of women in all aspects of their lives. I support this belief by sharing my story of resilience self-empowerment, and self-love. Through my spoken words and written words, I am pleased to say I have authored two books and currently working on my third book. And I am also a nuclear medicine technologist by trade. Well, the thing is, you just don't know. I would have never looked at you and said you were a nuclear th I mean, You never know. You can't tell your book by its cover, now can you? Mm -mm. <laughs> right. And where do you live, Stephanie, in this? I live this, right here in Daytona Beach. Okay. In this beautiful city of Daytona Beach. Yes. Thank you for being here. And Pamela Coleman? How did I come about? So I became the person you see by accident. This oh. was not something that was written down, something that planned on doing and or I saw happening I um went through different stages of life where I had to bury my grandmother uh 2020 2012 mm -hmm. my father 2014 my mother 2016 on my 50th birthday and my husband 2017 mm -hmm. and my um doctor said I needed to talk to a psychiatrist and I'm like yeah dude I'm in the school system I can't I can't make that type of payment. So I start writing and a friend of mine, she, she read like the first 35 and said, you need to do something with this. I sent it off to a book company. They said, finish it. We'll tell you what we can do with it. I did that. Um, they said they would publish it. They went ghost on me. So I ended up, long story short, I ended up uh, happening upon sheep publishing. Mm. From that book being uh, printed, Is This Me and My Her, um, I found out I was a mental abuse survivor at the hands of my own mother. Mm -hmm. So from there, I've been doing men's mental health um, seminars and stuff. 
So I want to know, like, where you're from. <laughs> yeah, we just get, jump right on like, in. <laughs> they get to the good stuff, right? I'm in Virginia. <laughs> but I know you and I'll live And I'm being Daytona this weekend. <laughs> well, you know you live somewhere where uh, there's a lot of snow, right? Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. I'm sitting here with an electric blanket wrapped around me. <laughs> and where it is, is that? It uh, is 15 degrees outside. Oh, my. And where is that? In Virginia. Uh, oh, Charlotte. really? Yeah, it's in Charlottesville where UVA is at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and it's that cold? Mm -hmm. Oof, that's a lot. That's right. why I look forward to seeing. Um, I think we looked. You guys are gonna have seventy four degrees this weekend. It's gonna be seventy. You here I'll, this weekend? Yeah, I'll be there this weekend. Oh yes, yeah, it is. I think it's gonna be about that same in February when the Fresh Book Festival yeah. comes. So that's exciting. People can get to go to the beach or whatever. I mean, I. If you're a Floridian or you've been here as long as I am, you don't go to the beach at 77. But, you know, there are people who come from up north and think that that's the best thing. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell us why you decided to become an author, Stephanie. Why do you think that that was important? So I have always been fascinated with the idea of putting pen to paper. Even as a little girl, um, whenever my mom scolded me, I was born and raised in Jamaica, by the way. And, you know, she would get mad at me at the end of the night. She will always see a letter on her bed with an apology. And I've taken this trend throughout my adulthood, even in my own family, my daughter, my husband, and closest people are closest to me. But I never thought of writing so the public could see. Why I decided to write my first book was because it was a self-healing process for me. I started journaling about all the many struggles that I was going through, breaking the different barriers that I had to deal with. And while I was writing this journal, it felt as if I was speaking to myself, but what was coming out of me was blowing my own mind. And in that process of healing, and you know, when you're going through something and you feel so much joy, you wanna share the joy with everyone. So I started making posts on Facebook and I started, um, making different social media content and people were drawing to that and, and they were loving my content and the way I articulate my word and the stuff that I say, say. Mm. and um, I noticed that the more I tapped into that part of myself the freer I become and I for me personally I love to I love to help people heal and I felt like, why not write my story, share my experience so that others, other women that that I see that are struggling are going through the same thing, just to have another perspective, another lens to see through to help them through this journey we call life. So that's the purpose of me writing my book is to, is to help people heal. You have two books also, right? Two, two books, yeah. Two books. Mm -hmm. um, Pam, so tell us what, uh, why you decided to become an author. When I was doing that introduction, I kind of touched yes. on it a little bit, <laughs> okay. but it was all by, by chance. And now it's just, it's just, um, something that won't stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it, it just keeps going. I keep finding new avenues that I keep tapping into that I didn't know was there and don't know where it came from, but I'm just going to buckle in and, and go with the ride. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll yeah, tell it's you that basically once you write, from, yeah. it's a healing. It was a healing thing yeah. for me. The first well, once one you, was. Once you write your first one, the second one has to come. And then the third one has to come. And then the fourth one has to come. It's just it's well, I got a six book process. series coming right. out now. Right. So yeah. So yeah, it's it's it a natural works. process. Tell me how you write. Do you write at night? Do you write in coffee shops? Do you write at home? Do you write in your bed on your laptop? I don't know how people do that, but a lot of people do. So um, everything stays with me. So whenever 
something hits me, you know, or if like when the kids are taking um, tests and I'm just sitting there waiting for something else to do, I'll pull pull the um the book out. I I went old school on this last book. You wrote it, it out first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I went old I'm school on that like one. Kareem. It was a five subject notebook because it had each each character had their own chapter. So ah. it was six characters. So I had a five subject notebook and each one had, and I, I wrote it all out and then typed it all back in. And I'm doing that for the next uh, four because I have their books already set up for them. Did you speak to Keith last time you were here? Keith Kareem Williams? Mm -hmm. He does that. He writes everything out by hand. It was it was it was different this time versus, mm -hmm. you know, if I didn't have the laptop, I had the notebook. So I always had the notebook in my backpack. So mm. it was it it's it sounds hard, but it was actually easier. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what he says. He says he just sits down and writes it and then, you know, puts it in on the computer and, and by the time it gets to the computer, it's better. For some reason so yeah and i ended up adding more because you're typing it and then stuff starts coming as you're taking it from here to there and it just starts and it just increases. wow how about you steph uh, can i call you steph or people call yes steph? yes definitely definitely yeah. yes, yes definitely um i want to touch on what um pam said at first when she said her first book was a healing process mine was definitely completely a healing process for me um was that a cultural healing well, trauma process was it cultural um, it was cultural yes cultural um emotional um physical I went through sexual abuse I you know I had a lot of shame and was this while you were in Jamaica or in this country when I wrote my first book or well the the trauma the trauma was, it started in Jamaica, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. It started in Jamaica, yes. Um, so writing for me is, I write early in the morning. Uh, mm. I try to get up when everybody else is sleeping. Yeah. And I do one to two hours. I try to put in two to 300 words a day if I'm working on a book. Um, I believe that just works for me. And yeah. I do that daily religiously it just become a a, a muscle <laughs> so you're me. at 5 a.m or four some four four yeah four four yeah. thirty when I'm writing a book and when I'm in the process of writing a book I set aside that time every morning to get up and spend at least two hours writing and to me that's the time it flows for me. I, I don't mm. even have to try. It just flows and um, it's silence and my mind is quiet and I'm in the zone. So that, that works for me when I'm working on um, a book. But when I'm just writing or journaling, I write with my hands. That's more personal. And um, I write, I do that anytime. Brian W. Smith tells me that you should be in the uh, stage of writing a book all the time. Hmm. So it should be constantly, okay. constantly on your mind. Well, he has, I don't know, I don't know, Mama Tony, probably 30 books out there. I but agree with you on that one. Yeah. You have to be constantly in the mindset that there's a book to be written to keep it's it going. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, I haven't done it, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what he tells me works the way the process works for him is to always have the next book in mind. And always have it outlined. Yes. Ready to go. Right. So um, everybody has a different process. Let's talk about your um, publishing experience, Stephanie. The who, why, what, when, and where of that. And how all that happened. Um, so my first book, um, both book actually, was is self-published. Um, but my first book, I wrote it, but I... I had an editor. I don't know if you know Sean Donovan. No. He's local here in Daytona. He was my editor. So he edited my first book and self-published it through Amazon. Um, that experience was, it was okay. It was good. It was, it was very, I wouldn't say easy, but it was, 
All I had a to learning do was experience. write. Yeah. It yeah. was a learning experience. All I had to do was write and work with him to go through what we need to change. But my second book, I did everything myself. I had mm-hmm. to learn the different platform, how to upload the book, the images, the size, went through the whole experience. It's time consuming. It's daunting. And- it's daunting. <laughs> <laughs> when you learn one thing yeah, then yeah. You, go, you know you buck on something else and then you know then you learn there's different ways to do the same thing and you and um but I I am I'm, I'm, I'm happy I took that challenge to to learn it myself just to know what it takes and at the same time if I have to do it myself I know how to do it. So my second book, I published by myself. I did the, and but my first book, um, I want to speak about speak about a cover. Yeah, was done by um, Kenneth Grant Inspiration. Oh, they okay. The cover of my first book, Evolve, Activate the Gift Within. My second book, I did the cover myself, and the editing, everything I did, the publishing, I did everything by myself. Um, Would you do that again? Huh. Would you do that again? Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. Yes, definitely. I would do that again. So Pam, tell me, what was your uh, process like? Um, it was, It's been good so far. Okay. Just a couple of bumps in the road, but, you know, um, to find the publisher was an accident because I thought I was talking to a young lady that was on in one of my Facebook groups and Mm -hmm. it's called she leads and I was and she has done books so I'm just going you won't believe that my publisher you know they said they were going to do the book and they're gone and da 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 so I get a message back and says send me your manuscript your your transcript of your manuscript your book and I was like okay so I sent it I'm like well why does she want it two days later they're like okay we'll take you on and I'm looking at the the name and I went I sent it to the wrong person. I was complaining to the wrong person. I was complaining that she publishing instead of she leads. And that's how I ended up with Shanita. Mm. (laughs) That's that that's how we got together. But her working with her is not like working with a company. It's more like, you know, um, I call her mom mom. So when I see her, he's like, oh, you know, we it, it, it's it's a different type of relationship because, you know, I can send her when I don't sleep because I don't sleep that often. Um, I can send her a text message in the middle of the night. Sometimes she's up and she actually answers, but I'm just doing it because it's on my mind and she'll respond. Wow. Yeah. So and you, you did have a miss like family. You did have a misstep. Though. Just just one. Right. With mm-hmm. a publisher. Yeah, at the beginning. Okay. And so did you resolve that in any way? I'd never heard from them. That's how I ended up with She Publishing. They just went Mm. poof. They wouldn't respond to emails. They wouldn't uh, take phone calls. Um, They're still in business, um, but they wouldn't. And I have tried my hands. And your your new publisher edits and everything? That's the whole shebang? Um, She gives you what you ask for. If you like this one I'm doing now, I choose to go through. It's a uh, boutique thing. You have a, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. So I choose to go through another source to have this one edited. Um, Not that source. Um, And then I'll send it to her. But yeah. I did do some self-publishing of small stuff because I didn't want to spend contract money right. on something that, I felt like I could do myself because I did one um, poetry through pain. So it was, again, I didn't know I could do that. It was just that I was sat down and whatever feelings I was in at that moment, they just started clicking off and I kept them in my phone and then I started a collection of them. So I was like, well, what am I going to do with them? So I just put them all together and self-published them and So we're going to do that workshop again this year, Hurt People, Hurt People. So I hope you all will join uh, awesome. that workshop and be part of that panel. I had a blast. <laughs> Did we do it on Friday or Saturday last year? It was uh, Saturday. Saturday. So um, oh, there's a lot going on Saturday. It might have to be Friday afternoon. Oh, that's fine. But, yeah, but um, yeah, because, you know, 
generally hurt people hurt. And that's kind of how yes. it all starts, right? So I wanted to not delve into how personal it was for you particularly, but the lessons that were learned by having the experience, right? Because the hurt is always going to be there. Yeah, the but, triggers don't go away. Right, the triggers don't go away. Mm -mm. But what was your development process, right? What what has happened since that time to make you a better person or make you more aware? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we really don't want anybody in there crying. And, you know, just I mean, if it happens, it happens. Right? But I just don't want you to think that you have to, you know, Mm -hmm. The la the one we did yeah. last year um was it was good it was it got a little heated but not out of control because right. people were passionate about what they wanted to talk about right. so I wouldn't say that was like heated aggressive it was just that this is my passion and this is what happened to me and I want to talk about it so it was the interaction with the panel and the the guests yeah good good I wasn't there so I uh, only got good feedback from it. Um, and it was recorded, but that's a whole nother story. I'll make sure that it, I get a copy of it this year. So, um, anyway, I uh, look forward to that workshop. Uh, we're going to pull the schedule together at the end of this month. I thought we, we could keep the registration open to the end of the month, but I don't think I can. It's, that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, we're we're pretty much sold out. No, it is a good thing. That's so, a good thing. Yeah, that's so, a good thing. Yeah, yeah it's a good thing. So, it's a great thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. So we will have the schedule by the end of the month. I want to ask you, Stephanie. Yes. What did the pandemic teach you about believing in what you do personally and professionally? First of all, um, let me say that the pandemic taught me a very good lesson. Okay. Anything can happen at any time. Hey, shut down the world. <laughs> shut down the world. And it doesn't matter which career field right. you're in. Um, but personally, on a personal level, it's there's a quote that says, your health is your wealth. That pandemic taught us, uh, at least me, that I need to take better care of my health. Because in the end, that is what's going to sustain me. And that's what I want to live. Uh, professionally, I had to learn to pivot. I remember when we were, I was working at the hospital and we were told we we're going to be on shutdown. And um, we also owned the business and we had to close the business and we yeah. were home. And I noticed there was a need, need for masks. I've never sewn in my life, but I went and I bought a sewing machine and I went on YouTube and I watched a couple of videos of how to sew. Mm. And I made, started making masks in Daytona, selling to different companies <laughs> to their employees that taught me you have to learn to pivot you have to learn to be self-sufficient and you just never know what can happen um yeah I mean you had to be yeah you really had to think about okay so what's the next step every day yeah. was, what's the next step right but your health was really number one one yes no I'm number one what about you Pam what did the pandemic I don't know exactly how to say this, <laughs> but I mean, just so I know what I'm, what I want to say, but I think it, um, as my grandmother was said, it put me back in my place. Oh, it put me back in my place because I, I wasn't high on the horse, but I was living my best life mm. and money was not a concern at that time. So when it hit and I was no longer employed, like uh -huh. she said, you had to pivot. Uh -huh. I had uh -huh. to come down a couple of notches and remember how she raised me because I had forgotten 
and I went up a little bit and I was, you know, going to Jamaica every year, you know, trying to find out how to move to Jamaica, you know, just all these different things. And then it hit. It was mm. just like the carpet was pulled from underneath of me and I was going, oodles, oodles and noodles ain't bad. <laughs> I used to love some fried bologna. So, you know, the fried bologna, the oodles and noodles came back. And it's just, it pulled me back. Yeah. So I learned more about myself where I could share with my kids that anything can happen. Anything and you can, can, you know, you can lose it all the next day. So I was able to um, reevaluate me and that happy-go-lucky, whatever I was doing prior to COVID. Um, I did the paparazzi jewelry to keep the food on the table and you'd be surprised how many, uh, folks that couldn't get out, love being online, spending money, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the post office was open. So they would shop every, every, I was on two times a week and they were in there and I get the money. I buy the groceries and kept the lights on. So it's, it was. Love it. I love the way you, yeah. you both pivoted. I mean. In an entrepreneurial way, right? No. Yep. Yeah, I think it taught us all that we could, that there's, not, there's more than one way to make money. Yes, 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 yes. And the internet opened, for me, the, inter, the internet opened the world. The shutdown yes. opened the universe to us. Yes. You know, Jamaica, the UK, Africa, Australia, right? Mm -hmm. And so we were able to communicate with people that we would never never have had a chance to, well, I won't say never, but the likelihood mm -hmm. of being a part of their lives was probably not going to happen if the pandemic did not happen. I think I got caught up on all Harlan Coben's books too. So I, I'm good. Also for me, um, the pandemic also, it, it shows you too that as life is changing, because change is the only thing that never changed. And we know that. But as life are changing, sometimes you can't be so married to a way of life. You have to learn to change with it as well. I started thinking, what if we never go back out to a brick and mortar job? What if we have to stay home? What is the next thing that you could do from home? And that's for me, I started looking into doing trading the stock market. And I started delving into that area. And today, um, I, I'm happy to say that I, I'm glad I opened that door because now I, I know I have different avenue that I could put my foot into. Right. And streams of income. You gotta yeah. have seven. I haven't accomplished that yet, but seven. Oh wow. I mean no, not me. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying they list. say they say you're supposed to have seven streams of income to keep it all afloat. Um wow. I'll leave that up to you guys who are who are younger. <laughs> to stay with what I got. But they say that you should be able to pull from different areas to make sure that your lifestyle stays the way you'd like it to be. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, so, thank you, Mama Tony. Uh, Ryan W. Smith has 40 books. Wow. And he always has a book on his mind. Hi, Brian. How you doing? So I want you to give me your ideas about, I see a lot of trailers. I see a lot of ideas about films. Um, Pamela, what is your idea about a trailer? And will you pursue your books as far as, you know, now we have Tubi, Ubi, everything. Will you pursue being a part of that arena? Yes. And one book is already in screenplay format, thanks to Lamont and crew from last year. Um, yeah, I I talk to Lamont all the time. Um, when we were in Atlanta together, you know, we kept talking about what I needed to do in order to get it done. Not to say he would do it, but he's just, you know, kind of knowledge. Giving, they give you no listen. Yeah, he's he's mentoring me through the yeah. through the steps. And he says, if they like it, who knows? So yeah, it's um it's 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 there. Um I was at the Shanitha's gala last year mm -hmm. and there was um, a screenwriter person. And if somebody gave me a million dollars, I could not tell you what his name is. I got all his information. Yeah. yeah. But the book that just came out 
last year. That's the one that's been piquing everybody's interest to do something with. So I just really got to get it in that serious format. So if somebody says, hey, do you have this? I'm able to go, boop, there you go. Nice. What about you, Steph? Um, first, let me say my life is a movie. And um, I don't know if you know, but, but my the first page of my Evolve book, um, it's about the bank robbery um, in Miami by my husband and how that took me by surprise. And it felt like my life just shattered um, in front of me. I, as I said before, I've been through a lot, uh, sexual abuse, the bank robbery, shame, distorted self-image, you name it. I have gone through so many things. I have, I believe I do have a unique thought-provoking story and I think Flame would benefit well from it. I do anticipate on seeking out that endeavor. So if you know anyone that is a screenwriter, yes, I am I am doing my due diligence and I am sending out inquiries and um, doing all the things that I know, but you never know it all and you don't know it all. So I am open to any um, advice or anything like that. But yes, I do. I do want to pursue screen for my for my books so then the next question was to give us a, a brief snippet of your books um so if you'll put them on screen stephanie the qu next question is yours uh let's see oh. the cover you have the cover oh um no that's okay i i have to pull it up <laughs> i didn't have you it don't have a copy of it right there in, in the room you're in no yes i do Okay, there you go. Yeah, see. No, you evolve. can see it. Can you, yeah. yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's um, Evolve, and this is Create Her. So give us a brief snippet about the book. I don't want you to give it away, of course, but just a little Okay, bit. so um, Evolve, Activate the Gift Within. It's about, um, it encourages reader to create and build and lead their paths while breaking free from shame. That was my life experience. That was my own um, experience. The main message revolves around fostering a positive relationship with yourself, you know, becoming one with yourself and embracing your individuality, taking charge of your own journey towards your own self-empowerment. And when I say self-empowerment is believing in who you are and accepting all of you, all of you and um, heal as well. That's um, Evolve Activate the Gift Within with Create Her. Create Her is mostly towards young adults or young women, helping you, young women embrace their unique superpowers to learn how to harness their, 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 their superpowers or mm. their, you know, who, knowing who they are, you know, to live a more fulfilling life, to build their self-confidence and their self-esteem and making better choices. You know, we always say making right choices, right. but I think making better choices is the best way to approach things. And um, because sometimes when you feel like you make a mistake or you did something wrong, you beat yourself up. And sometimes you're the only one standing in the way of your freedom, your, your self-sabotaging yourself. But when you look at things in a different perspective and saying, mm. well, I should I make a better choices. It's not that the one is bad. It was just not good for me at that time. So learning how to navigate those things and understanding your beliefs, how they are formed, understanding yourself. Um, you guys were talking about scriptures when we started this and um, there's a scripture that said, know thyself. And for me is understanding who you are to know yourself is to understand all of you, understand your emotions, your thought patterns, how your behavior, knowing about you, knowing how you show up in your own life. And I think young people should learn that from a young age, because that is their superpower and honing that and being able to, 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 to build that mentally, and especially your mental muscle. I'm very, very passionate about about helping young girl, young girls and boys, but I I I, I cater towards girls because I know nothing about boys. I am yeah. a girl, and this is through my own yeah. experience. Your lens, your lens, through my right. lens. Yeah. But you know, build mental muscle, you know, and and learn about yourself, and you know, so that's what create her is about and evolve. What about you, Pam? 
So I'm packing for Florida. So my first two books are, <laughs> are packed. Okay. Um, my suitcase is packed, if that tells you anything. So I I kind of Googled it, but I don't know if you can see it or not. Okay. Yes. That's the first one. And that's um, me surviving mental abuse at the hands of my mom. Um, and it takes you through me starting to remember it at age five. And I couldn't understand why she didn't want me. Um, my dad told me that she wasn't going to bring me home from the hospital because I was white. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't have an Afro puff, um, my dad said he wasn't quite sure how he was going to get me home. He wasn't sure about that. But as I finished the book, which is kind of funny, but not funny, I realized that my mom was jealous of me and my father's relationship. Yeah. The only reason why my dad stayed with her, because she used to beat him up on a regular basis, mm -hmm. um, was because of me. And I said that to my grandmother who died um, last, not last year, but the year before last. She was 108. And I told her, I said, uh, this is what I got from the book. She said, well, hell, I could have told you that. Thanks, Granny. <laughs> but yeah, she um, she didn't. Yeah. When everybody used to say, you know, when you go to school and somebody say, yo, mom. And I'd be like, yeah, you're probably right. You know, but if you said something about my dad. That's different. So. Yeah, I would I would definitely do something. So this is number two, which comes on the heels of the first one, because after I um, buried my husband, I sold my house. And it says I stand in this empty house, no longer a wife, daughter, or granddaughter. What am I going to do next? This book picks up with how I start the healing process. But APS comes along and tells um um, the nursing home tells APS that I was stealing my grandmother's money. So APS has me arrested and put a felony charge of embezzlement over me. Oh my goodness. So that takes you through that. And as you can tell, it all worked out because I'm, I'm here. It gets better. You know, it gets better. This one. Noxious. Is the book. <laughs> This is the book that all have been waiting for, and those have got it, has read it, and waiting for the rest of it. That one that takes you through about a lovely young lady who mm -hmm. goes out on internet dates, finds Mr. Wright, mm -hmm. finds out that she was one of four he was seeing, one of two he was seeing the entire three years. This book ends with a all four women at the cliff at the top of the cliff, not to give it away, but the car is on fire. They put the car out and he's gone. Mm -hmm. Next book. Be out so the, does the next book kind of uh, differentiate the four women? And it, so they all each, have their own story. Each one has their own chapter because it ends with him saying that he's having revenge. The epilogue mm. takes you into the other one. And it says that he's going to take care of deep, 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 deep. So the vengeance that's coming out, each person has a chapter. Each chapter ends with a burning SUV, hence from this book. Right. Each chapter ends that way. But when you get to the end, thinking you think you know who it is, it's a totally different something else. Nice. It's not who you I think I love it. Is. I love it. And so do you think that um, each of your trauma came from different people in your lives, but yes. um, your mother, you can't do anything about. I mean, that's, you know, that's, she probably had some mental trauma herself, Something. right? Right. And Something. so you can't, yeah, there's nothing you can do about that. But let's talk about the choices of men and how you, um, how you relay that message to younger women. And that wasn't one of your questions, but I, I sure like you to answer that because when you are dealing with, I know you deal with young women in the land, Stephanie. Yeah. Um, how is it that you relate to them? What to, you know, what are the, what are the red flags and what are the triggers you should look for? when you're dealing with um, a young man. I'll go to you first, Stephanie. 
Ooh. <laughs> so um I like to uh, speak from experience. Yes, um, please do. What I think. <laughs> that's, all we, that's all we can do. <laughs> we, we just, it should yeah. be like. Yeah. But um, personally, I wasn't the person who dated a lot when I was growing up before I got married. And I've been married for 16 years now. So I really haven't been on the dating, the dating um part of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But as as far as um red flags. I that's a tricky question because I'm still with my husband <laughs> but um as far as red flag I would tell a young girl okay let's let's put it on your trauma end then so okay, let's put it on my trauma right, end. okay put it on perfect. your trauma end so okay, tell us perfect. what are the okay what are the red flags that you now know were here and you weren't looking at and maybe not that it was your fault yes but maybe if you had a diff was looking at a different lens, it might have come out a little clearer. Okay, so that's that's better. Okay, so never ever make yourself feel uncomfortable to make somebody else feel comfortable. The number one thing, if if you feel like you can't wear a certain clothes or um, you're gonna or you can't um, act a certain way or be yourself or say certain things and be feel free. That mm -hmm. is a red flag. Um, one of the things um, I could share now that I've, I'm grown up to a young girl is that we always feel like we're going to be judged right. or um, we're doing things so that we are trying to manipulate situation to mm -hmm. get what we want. But in all honesty, if the, the energy that goes out be, behind what you're doing is the true seed that you're planting. And when things started mm. showing up in your life, it's it's not because what we wish the other person should be like or do is who they are. It's really who they are. The, um, believe in yourself trust yourself i always tell my daughter if she had a little girl cuz sometimes it's best when you put you make young people try to think that they're making their own decisions right and they had a daughter what would you tell that daughter so it allows them to see things from a different perspective now it's not them sometimes when you're in it you cannot see the the, the blind spot sometimes, especially if you're infatuated and you want what you want. And sometimes you don't learn that part of you yet. Or math When you're in the of middle you. of a hurricane, you cannot see out. You cannot you see. You just cannot because it's swirling exactly. all around you, right? Yeah. Yeah. But exactly. when you look through a, a lens we're in now, you're, it's a, it's, you're going at it differently. And mm -hmm. what would you tell that little girl? Like if she comes to me about something she's going through, you know, with her own self, I would say to her, how would you tell, what would you tell your daughter? What would you tell her? And, and, and that right there, it's always come off as you're looking for the best for that person. And, 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 and the answer you come up with the attitude that you have, um, the things that you will do or you tell that person is exactly what we should do. <laughs> right. Even when we don't want to. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Even when we don't want to. So yeah. some yeah. red flags, it's, 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 and, and I always say, especially when you're young, when you're young, never go into a relationship thinking, Oh my God, he's going to be my dream husband or my dream girlfriend or, or you know, this is going to happen because that person who you see before you is a child themselves and they have not evolved yet. They have not learned the no. things to be the perfect person or there is no perfect person, but a, a more um, mature person or, you know, taking responsibility for their actions and, and things that they do. Or who the in being themselves so uh, it's not just young women but it's just it's it's in general is that never ever take on a victim role never right. think it's something that you have done you did. i don't look as beautiful you know did i say the wrong thing mm -hmm. is it me it's 
never ever do that. You are amazing in what you don't know. It's okay. You're growing, you're learning. You know, I've always said this and, and, and it speaks such volume is that I believe that we are here on earth to learn and learning while you live. And when you understand that, you understand that every experience, every person you meet, everything is a teacher. Every experience you have is a learning experience. It's never there to take you down. It's, it's, it's to tell you that you can, there is a change. There is something more. And, and I never used to look at life like that. I look at everything as an attack. I looked at every, you know, poor me, you know, yeah. life is hard, you know, why me? They did this. And it was the family I was born in. It's the address I had. It's, you know, I blamed everything rather than um, instead of trying to go through the situation, grow through it. And when I understand that, you know, my life is about learning and, and, and as I am learning, I have to know how to live. I see things differently. Mm, nice and instead of looking at, yeah. at, at at oh this is an obstacle oh this is a challenge so this is something for me to learn it just takes off so much weight and so much pressure yeah this is and, this is a stone that can be either walked around or walked over or yeah as opposed to being walked through yes right. yes yes excellent yes. what about you miss pen now i know we're not going to talk about your mom because that's just Oh no 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 no! no. I'm, I'm, I'm that's, good. That, yeah. that that's neither here. I, I want to let's talk about the internet dating, and maybe you could share. So some <laughs> for some me, questions. when that took place, and that took place, and then that was over. Yeah. Um, I didn't. It was my self worth. Mm. It was um, not knowing that I was worthy of anything other than what was in front of me, mm -hmm. which um, hence the collab book that I got coming out to. I'm a busy little person that's and it. that's about red flags. Each person has their chapter about red flags. So it's supposed to be red flags do I really see red or do, because I always said I saw the red flags, but I chose to change the colors. Right. So I, I knew they were there, but they were not red. I did not see red flags. I saw white flags. I saw green flags. I saw everything else. But now I realize that if I question something, then that must be something there. So yes. if I'm yeah. saying, so, you know, you didn't call, you know, you said you were going to call. Oh, I was out with the boys. Hmm. Mm. So if you start questioning that situation, then step back. But at that time, I didn't have, as I told my son, my self-worth and my confidence of myself wasn't yes. there. Um, That came from the marriage side of it, because like she said, you know, I would get dressed and have a cute little outfit and he never said, don't wear it, but he goes, so you gonna wear that. And then, yeah. um, I cut my hair cause I had long hair like Stephanie and I wanted to try something short. So I went into my beautician and I cut up to here, you know, he went to my beautician and told her, don't ever cut my hair again. Mm -hmm. That was 24 and a half years of marriage. And I never really realized it that it was happening because he was just like my mom control and i didn't and and i he never put a hand it felt on like me. a good space you know oh yes yeah. he never put I'm a hand to. on me he didn't, right. you know, yeah. raise his voice he raised his voice at the kids which is a trigger for me because it's mm -hmm. still a trigger for me if i'm around somebody and they raise their voice at me i go in i i, I can't get past that trigger but yeah it's just if if it doesn't feel right, then it ain't right. <laughs> yeah, that that you know, there's no set the discernment is a real thing. Now, we, if we decide not to listen to it, that's a whole nother story. But that is a God given gut feeling mm -hmm. that you really have to go with, right? Listen, it's eight fifty four. Wow, that went fast, and I want to make sure we can put all this on all the platforms. You know, we have this hour you have to do, but let me just really quickly 
tell the audience, Pam, why new authors should attend, well, Fresh, of course, but other book events. Why is it important? For me, um, my very first one, which I did not know was Mr. Wyatt's first one three years ago. So we both started together. Um, for me, it was a learning experience because I got to look around at the seasoned um, authors that came and I go, okay, well, I don't have that on my table and I, I need this. So each event I've gone to, I've learned. Um, my biggest thing that I would tell people is don't go in with the expectation to sell 50 books. No. You know, if you go in and you get the family that I got from Daytona, love my crew, um, sales will come at another time. But if you- In another the, way. Yeah. If you get the connections like I got from Fresh, like I got from uh, Mr. Curtis's event, um, those those connections. And when I went to Texas- I went to Texas and did not sell one thing. I went to Atlanta and did not sell one thing, but I left rich because I had um, relationships with Dr. Miller that, you know, I have relationships now that just won't go nowhere. So I'll take the relationships and the network. The money will come eventually yes. and I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it to get this out. Yeah. So. What about you, Steph? Um, this is going to be my first year <laughs> and I am super duper excited, but my advice to you as a new timer is invest in yourself. Yeah. Showing up for yourself is putting yourself first. I am open to the networking, the learning experience and the exposure. So I am placing myself, a, a part of my create her is to create your reality. Put mm. yourself in position that the position you want for yourself. Don't worry about how the other parts, the moving parts is going to work. Just place yourself in the right ground. What I will say is that you'll have deltas all over the place and and AKs all over the place. Make sure one of them sits at your table and you go visit everybody in the room because everybody in the room has something to give you and they will give it to you willingly. Um, and, 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 and the connection, you don't want to leave there without knowing who's in the room. Right, Pam? Pretty mm -hmm. much? Yeah. You have to know who's in the room. It's really, really important because- The, the um, thing I've found about your event Miss Donna, is that I went to another one after yours. Yours was in February. I went to one in March and I was surprised at how many people was at the one in Richmond, Virginia that was at your event. Because yeah. they were coming through the door, they were setting up and then they were just coming through, walking through the way. Uh, and they're like, I know. <laughs> so that part I like. Yeah. You know, um, a couple of the young men were trying to get to Virginia to my men's mental health seminar. So from your event, they were trying to make their way there. So for me, that was cool. Um, this year, I bring in the YouTube. So I, when I see them, I'll be like, hey, you want to jump on a YouTube? So right. I will um, be talking to the men as they go by about that part of it. So that that's my new baby right now that that one's up and coming yeah it is and and what i will say is that when you when people tell you oh everybody writes a book no they don't not in this melanated community it is still very small and we yes. really just all should be out here collaborating yes. and supporting each other to make it happen right yeah and once you once you get in that circle now, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying when I need something, it's really nice to be able to pick up the phone and make a phone call or, you know, send an email to say, you know, I'm in need of this. Can you help me without anybody saying, oh, man, call me again, you know, or just a brainstorm or just a brainstorm. Right. Yeah. yeah it's really, really makes a difference. And so as we get on top of the nine o'clock hour, I will ask you, Stephanie to give me your contact information and give me your pearl of wisdom. Okay, um, my contact information is uh, my website is I create her 
dot com. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Stephanie Harrington, or on Instagram, create her create underscore her one and cre at create her nine at YouTube. My pearl of wisdom, if that's what you call it, I don't remember what you call it, but my pearl of wisdom. Pearl of wisdom. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, pearl of wisdom that I want to leave with you. And it's what I leave everywhere I go. Life is a gift. And how you live your life is the gift you give to yourself and the world. I love it. Thank you. Ms. Pam, contact information and your pearl of wisdom, please. Instagram, P. Coleman underscore author. Um, Facebook is Pamela Coleman. <gasps> pearl of wisdom. Uh, for me is to believe in yourself and no one can stop you but you. Yeah, I like it. Thank you, ladies. I will see you in 30 days. Yeah. I'm packed and ready. Let's go. <laughs> no, that's gonna be really, really nice. And thank you for joining and I'm fresh but you're driving this year, right? Mm -hmm. Uh thirteenth year at the Fresh Book Festival. I certainly appreciate it. And everybody here, uh, my tribe, thank you for being here this evening. And when the lights go out and the cell phone towers go down. All you have left is a flashlight and a good book. Thank you, ladies. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank good night, you. everybody. Good night. Thank you so much for having oh, us. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye.